موسیقی I happen to be Shahzad Hassan Khan and it happens to be a Friday today. So please make sure that everybody who's actually doing wonderfully well, make sure that you look after the people around you and that you actually remember us all in your prayers as well. And for everybody who's not tuned into PTV World as of now, we still pray for you, for your safety, for your betterment, for your prosperity as well. But first things first. Hello, Hajra. How are you doing today? Assalamu alaikum. Thank Wa you so much for asking me. And, you know, weather is great. So I think everything feels really great. And I do feel that, you know, people of South Asia, they are so much, they're genetically so much tuned to, you know, absorb that much of a heat. But this year, it was, you know, crazy, crazy hot. I, I never <laughs> felt this kind of, you know, um, a heat and humidity. Uh, well, I guess this is the climate change. And also today is the day to uh, combat the desertification and the drought. So, um, and, and with with regards to Pakistan, I think this day finds some added significance, right, true, Shazad? True, true. Because we are going towards the wa water scarcity. Yes. And I, I think that our glaciers are me melting and we need to, you know, have more dams so they can, we can capture um, the water which is getting melted from the glaciers. In that well, sense. I think I have a dis slight disagreement over okay. here. It's because of the fact that the last time we had DG met over here in the studios, okay. He said, hey, you know what, having dams, okay, you know, partially is fine. Right. But we really need to rely on the water recharge, you know, which obviously is going to take place from flash floods or probably rains okay. as well. And that's how we go through throughout the year as well. So, you know, for everybody right. who's out there, I don't know whether dams are st still very suitable for Pakistan or, you know, the way we right. want to save uh, water for ourselves. But at the same time, because they do uh, release an advisory before flash floods as right. well. So I think people really need to move their livestock from whichever places, you know, they expect that fl flash floods will come as well. Because and ladies and gentlemen, this water recharge is more important right. than dams. That's and, what and, I'm going and to say. And Shazad, you know, there are actually laws out there in the constitutions where it is prohibited to not the build, you know, uh, the, the houses, you know, especially when it comes to the embankments of the yes. river. And people deliberately do that. And then, you know, when there's a, you know, a huge discharge of water, so um, there's a huge, I mean, a loss at that time. Exactly. But I'm going to share a very interesting story because just yesterday, you know, so I have uh, friends and cousins over from uh, UK. They right. wanted to visit Faisal Mosque. And so we went to Faisal Mosque for the right. Maghrib prayer as well. And right after that, you know, it was raining. Right. So we had to run towards our car. It was a long way. You know, we got drenched under the rain as well. But I felt absolutely on top of my energy. And I was like, hey, you know what? This is what I've been asking from Allah Almighty for so long. And, you know, so what, you know, my prayer does not complete over here. So my part of my prayer was that, you know, next morning when I wake up, I need to see Islamabad all cleaned up, washed up. And, you know, right. I need to drive towards work, listen to some good music. And shukar alhamdulillah, Lamia, you know, aapne meri dua sunli. Thank you very much. A million of other people might have been praying for rains as well. But while, you know, the weather is uh, a little, I'm not going to say chilly, but, you know, it showed on the meter that it was 23 degrees today. I was like, hey, you wow. know, this is something which you After want. 46 especially, to 23. Especially when you know that your um, national AC temperature all over Pakistan is 26 <laughs> degrees. You kind of love it too as well. Right. But very quickly, let's get started with, uh, with, the, with the day. It's going to be an amazing right. day. And, you know, the guests we have over here, they've done something so instrumental for the prosperity or the future prospects of Pakistan, right. which I certainly cannot keep myself calm. And uh, this is something I've been talking about. I've been talking about research and development. I've been talking right. about such facilities where people can go explore newer avenues as well. And imagine they have done that. Once again, this university has made us proud. But before right. we give it away, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at the top stories, what's happening in the country and outside the country. In the first place, let's go. Haja, what do you have for us? Right. So we have uh, Prime Minister Shaba Sharif who has expressed the hope that the Road to Mecca initiative will be extended to other cities of Pakistan in the future to facilitate the pilgrimage intending to perform Hajj. I think that's an amazing initiative, no? Uh, the Road to Mecca initiative, you know, where they have added more ease of going to the Hajj. Have you been to Hajj before? Shibar? I've been to Umrah. Right, right. Yeah. Right. So is, is it a very, you know, a lengthy procedure, you know, going it's up not, there? It's not. As no? soon as you land in Saudi Arabia, you know, they, they just welcome you with their arms wide right, open right. and they do not bug you at all. 
It's just that, that you just need to drink those two drops of va whatever vaccine they give you. Okay, and yeah. that's it. They will right. always treat you with a lot of respect. And I think it's a great initiative right. for people who are actually looking for cheaper solutions anyways right. to go for uh, Hajj as well. Because this year around, you know, the most VIP Hajj is at 2.5 million rupees, which I believe is very expensive. And the minimum is at least a million rupees as well. So, you know, for bringing down the prices for people who actually right. want and wish to go for Hajj, I think that's something which is important, you know, and for our English-speaking audiences, we call it pilgrimage as well, you know. But now moving on, because we have been talking about weather, ladies and gentlemen, let's see what the Met Office has predicted for the coming days over here in Pakistan. I believe uh, the weather is going to be great, you know, okay. throughout the weekend and in the coming week as well. So Met Office predicts pre-monsoon rain thunder showers from tonight as Khyber Pakhtunkhwa Disaster Management Authority advises to take precautionary measures. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, so for everybody who's out there, please make sure that you do take your precautionary measures right. in time, well in time. Right, right. And so moving on to our third uh, and the very most important news, uh, which is the FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022 official poster was revealed in an official ceremony at the Hamad International Airport. Uh, so Shazad, when the trophy came here, so you were there at the unveiling of it, right? Yeah, you no, the, for when the trophy came for the very first time, that was the time when I right. was there with the alongside the French uh, footballer Christian Karimbu as well. And right. uh, I think it was super. So there, there was a lot of secrecy around, you know, it's unveiling. Why do you think so? This is the custom. And you know what, what they do is because it's all, it's entirely made up of gold. And, mm -hmm. you know, imagine if it weighs eight to nine kilos, you know, there needs to be security. And they do not certainly rely on our security. They bring their own security alongside it. And you know what, it is so fascinating to, to see that, you know, there will be a box in front of you on the stage. Yeah, and yeah. all of a sudden, that trophy comes out from somewhere. And, you know, oh, you wow. certainly have no idea what happened, what went down. And, you know, you already all, all of a sudden, you see the trophy. And then you see four or five people, as tall as I am. And you're right. around the trophy. You cannot go closer. You know, only if they allow you, that's the time when you can so, go. I was lucky enough to do so as well. But imagine, you know, eight and nine kilos of gold <laughs> right in front right. of you. So uh, these are certainly the scenes from, you know, Mission Impossible or something like that. So talking about movies and talking about, you know, how the movie uh, does incorporate, you know, the semi-automational uh, semiconductors and the chips, you know, which is actually the brain of the um, automational, yeah. yes, world, right? And it is the very important thing when it comes to a modernity, when it comes to 21st century, right, Shazad? Exactly. Um, and so we are going to talk about this topic and we certainly have very esteemed guests uh, in our studio who are going to talk about it. And they belong to the university of, of which I am also an <laughs> alumni. So I really feel proud of that. So, um, you know, I, w I would want you to take the lead yeah. as well. First of all, tell, in fact, share uh, with Pakistanis, you know, what good news we have for them. Right. You know, because indigenously, Pakistan for the very first time has made its first ever semiconductor chip, yes. right? And uh, I think we feel really proud of that because I think that, you know, uh, this is one step towards securing ourselves. And I do feel that, the, you know, security in 21st century is a highly multi-dimensional term, yes. you know. So, so securing yourself doesn't mean, you know, the amassing the military and, you know, amassing the, uh, the arms in that sense. It does also mean that protecting your people from disinformation, from misinformation, from food insecurity, from climate change and what not, right? Thank you very much right. for, you know, kind of uh, talking about it because, you know, when we talk about, you know, microprocessors, you know, right. we, we really need to talk about refrigerators. We need to talk about audio visuals right. as well. We need to talk about mobile accessories. We need to talk about climate control, infotainment, power trains. You know, there's so many products which, ladies and gentlemen, obviously use microprocessors as well. Earlier, we might have been importing it, but now imagine that we might have been exporting it as well. It happens to be a $550 billion industry as of now. And we know that information technology is just booming every single day as well. So imagine now Pakistan will get its fair share, but it will only get because of these people and their team who were dedicated. They made sure that they're going to put in the research, development, funds, and the expertise of all the people probably, you know, within their teams as well. So congratulations to the entire team. Ladies and gentlemen, the people who spearheaded the team are with us today. And we're lucky to kind of uh, interview them. Imagine, you know, say if I... Well, if I go back in time, if, you know, right after my A-levels and I went to NAST, you know, I don't think that, you know, they probably might have given me admission. <laughs> but here I am interviewing the amazing people uh, yeah. and, and I just cannot keep calm about that. So we're very lucky, ladies and gentlemen, that we have actually been joined by somebody who happens to be a pro-rector, research, innovation and commercialization. He is Dr. Rezwan Riaz. Hello, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much. Pleasure being here. Thank you very much, sir. Pleasure is all ours and congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, last but not the least, 
alongside him. We are very lucky that we've actually been joined with somebody who happens to be assistant professor, Department of Computing, NAS Seeks, that's what we call it, and tiny team lead. He is Dr. Rehan Ahmed. Hello, sir. Assalamu alaikum and congratulations Assalam are in order. Assalamu alaikum. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much once again. So let's get started. Alumni, you want okay. to get started? Okay. So uh, I really wanted to ask that, you know, uh, Silicon Fees, and they, as Shahzad mentioned, it's a more than $500 billion industry, right? Uh, so what propelled you to step into this field, you know, considering the fact that there are some countries who have monopolized this trade and they really don't want to diversify it? Uh, your thoughts on it, please. Please. Uh, so thank you. Thank you very much for providing us the platform to talk about this. So overall, uh, you know, semiconductor is a global industry. It's right. a, it's a five 500, uh, over 500 billion industry, and mm -hmm. expected to reach actually 1 trillion billion by 2030. Okay. Um, uh, unfortunately, Pakistan has no share in this global industry because we are not doing a single step uh, over here. Uh, recently, uh, the, the fear of uh, technology denial, as we kind of inferred from the uh, global uh, uh, upset that just recently happened actually gave us a, a, a very good uh, uh, idea that we need to start head start uh, this this program or this field uh, over in Pakistan so NAS being the premier Institute uh, we were actually started we actually started doing the uh, semiconductor thing or uh, bringing that technology or teaching that technology piece into our curriculum uh, four year, four years back and we actually uh, uh, brought that technology in right into the classroom. We started teaching these, these, these students. We, we actually revamped our programs around it, and we prepared the quality HR that is actually the uh, brain or actually the, uh, the, the real people who actually designed that. Uh, so this product that you see is actually the uh, product of, uh, uh, of our students actually. Uh, uh, so I'm so so proud of it. So that's that's and that's uh, wonderful. Since you just mentioned that you know that the discipline actually started four years back, so obviously that's the journey of the microprocessor which you came out with as well. And I think it's it's great. So doctor, moving on to you now. What I want to ask you is obviously when we talk about NAST, you know, we talk about uh, you know uh, how NAST has been making sure to kind of give all the students that space to do whatever they wanted to do and explore themselves. But what do you think is the primary? focus for NAS University itself and you know why do you think that you know so much of research and development rather than you know the uh, public institutions kind of giving it that importance we have NAS to our rescue. Sure. Uh, the National University of Sciences and Technology since its inception has focused on two things uh, almost stubbornly. One is quality yep. and the second is applied research to solve Pakistan's and of course global problems. True. So in this same vein, we decided, uh, as uh, Dr. Saab mentioned four years ago, that Pakistan needs to become independent, sovereign control of its hardware. True. And therefore, we need to have our own semiconductor chips, our own IC circuits, and then for, therefore hardware. So this is not a simple thing that one day you decide to design and next day it gets manufactured. There's a whole process. True. And we do this for every technology that we go into. Okay. Nast alhamdulillah is ranked 334th in the world right now, number one in Pakistan. But we are far more proud of the fact that in some areas we are ranked amongst the top 100, top 200 yeah. universities. In fact, the School of uh, Computer Science is ranked 131 in the world. Wow. So imagine how many computer science schools there are. And to yes. be ranked 131 in the world means you are doing something right. Hmm. So the idea is to focus on a problem that is of national importance yeah. and go for it and then go for it in a full qualitative way. And sir, in addition to that, you know, just because you mentioned sovereignty in it as well, is it because of the fact that the hardware we have been importing might have been reported to leak our data as well? Oh, might have is actually not the word. <laughs> I, it is leaking it data. Is? Okay. So you have to assume, even if you are not sure, you have to assume that a hardware that you don't know about is going to be leaking your data. And mm -hmm. as we understand, data is the fuel of today exactly. and the future. If you don't have control of your data, if you don't know where your microphone, your uh, TV, or your camera is sending your feed, you have no control over your sovereignty. True. So therefore, you have to have your own hardware. And, and do you think that this hardware is not going to leak our data internally? 
Well, <laughs> it will leak it to Nust, hopefully. <laughs> no, but that's that's what, a lighter note. That's what open source is all about. We can verify it. Our mm -hmm. other researchers can verify it. And we will open this architecture to everybody in the country because we want it to be wow. a national product. Wow, that's wonderful. Okay, so I really wanted to ask you this question. So since Dr. Saab mentioned that, you know, uh, and data is the new uh, currency, the new gold currency, you know, it is said about that. Mm. Or, uh, or in Pakistan's perspective, I think it's the new property as well. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Uh, so, and, and securing ourselves, you know, does not only mean the massing, the military or stuff. Securing ourselves also means that, you know, protecting ourselves from the infiltration uh, against our data, right? Uh, so, you produce this chip. Uh, how do you think, you are going commercial onto that, or do you think that you need the support of the government? What is your next, uh, the, the big step that you want to take in this field? Uh, okay, so I think, uh, 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 can I take uh, a sure, step sure, back sure. And, sure, sure. And, sure. and actually... Sure, go ahead. Uh, right. Exactly, right. yeah, yeah. So please go, go. continue. Okay. continue. So first of all, uh, if you focus over here, uh, I just want to a little bit, you know, educate my audience at the same time. Sure. Right, right, uh, sure. So this chip that you see in front, uh, very abstractly speaking, uh, has certain steps. Right. Uh, I, I'm only sharing uh, th these three steps very abstractly yeah. uh, in, in an ordinary way. So first of all, uh, the chip is designed, so the idea is conceived, like what chipset do you really want to make? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, once you conceive that idea, then there are smart people in the room who just sit together <laughs> uh, and you know uh, start expressing that idea. Okay. Yep. Uh, and uh, uh, eventually, at the end of the day, you have a design, so very yep. abstractly speaking. So, yep. so once you have the design, then that design has to be sent to a factory. Okay. Uh, we, we call it uh, Silicon Foundry. Okay. Uh, that Silicon Foundry is a very specialized factory, actually, which actually makes this chip. Okay. Uh, and then once That's that it. chip is produced, then it gets packaged. So if I can show Pakistan, actually, the chip, yeah, yeah, the, sure. the chip that has been produced by the Silicon Factory. Uh, yeah. And you will have to hold it as well, sir, so that we can zoom in. Okay and that everybody can see it, how many circuits are there. So I dedicate this un, unmailing to one of my curious students, Shahid Sajid, <laughs> who actually forced me to <laughs> open up or take away this cap. Okay, so if you can uh, zoom in the, uh, into yeah, yeah. the center. Do you see this small dot? We are trying to do this, huh? yes, nice. in the center. Okay, that's the chip. Yes. And that's why we call it oh, wow. Nust Tiny Embedded Chip. Wow. So that's the chip that contains actually a quarter of a million of transistors. So I wow. normally <laughs> tell my students that uh, designing is an art yeah. and manufacturing it is a living miracle. Wow, wow. So, so once, once, you, uh, once the chip is manufactured, then it gets packaged and this is the assembly that you see here, yeah. okay. right? Once uh, you have this assembly that comes back, then there are people who test mm -hmm. this chip and it gets mounted on a printer circuit board. This one? Yeah. Yep. So that, that the, the so chip that you see, yes. So that's there's the that black dot in it? Yes. 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 So that's the powerhouse. That's the brain, uh, which kind of helps automating Computations, things. Computations, logic, and everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's the brain of everything. And we carry this brain, you know, in our pockets. All of us, we have cell phones, all of these cameras, these lights. Right. Uh, you mentioned in the beginning, smart refrigerators, consumer lockness, what not. Yeah. Right. Uh, semiconductor, and especially the microprocessor, which is the brain, like we have the brain, uh, it is found in almost every consumer electronics that we see see today. Right. Exactly. Uh, so once this chip is mounted on the uh, PCB board or printer mm -hmm. circuit board, then this is ready for deployment yeah. uh, uh, for, for a product, right? right. Over so here. So that dot is somewhere and in And please here. note the Pakistani flag on the board. Absolutely. This is also <laughs> our own board. <laughs> MashaAllah. This, this is here. So yeah. Here is the flag. Wow, it's wonderful. So we've got the image out there as well. Great. Great. Thank ahead, you so very much for doing it. No so the... The whole idea of you know telling you this whole uh, whole uh, chain of making this chip that we start right. from the design and right. all the way to, to the product, this whole system, this whole ecosystem of uh, uh, this chip design has been done at NASA. Alhamdulillah. So so you so so you do the designing bit and then you send it to Taiwan. Uh, okay. They so manufacture it and yeah. then they. Yeah, so Get since, I, since I'm still educating people. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah, you're still learning. Yeah. So and are you open this, to questions? So, so, so this thing. And there will the, be a quiz at the end. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so this, this part in the middle, uh, right. which is the fabrication, fabrication. part, yep. a Silicon Foundry is a very specialized factory. Okay. Uh, to, to give you some numbers, uh, if we talk about the technology, so uh, world is at less than two nanometer technology. And the oldest node we had right now is 180 nanometer. 
right? So if you want to put a very old factory, uh, with, uh, a factory with older technology, uh, that will cost you around five billion US dollars. Yeah. You do the maths. Uh, so it's almost like uh, one billion park rupees, right? Uh, so almost half of our reserves. Yes, <laughs> yes. So uh, uh, giving you an idea that why this fabrication plant is not a financially viable option for True. Pakistan. Okay. Mm. The other point here is that we need to really understand that uh, uh, among all these steps of manufacturing, this is the most cost intense part. Now, uh, the machines that make this small chip, like you said, it's a living miracle. Now you, you can think about it that packing uh, a quarter million of transistors in this real state silicon is, is a one mm by one mm uh, area. True. Uh, so the machines, uh, uh, various parts from uh, various parts of the world come together to make this machine. Okay. So what I say to my students is a politically entangled process, <laughs> right? Yeah. So it means that uh, not only is financially viable, it's it's also not politically viable okay. to have these you know foundries at least in the in the short term. In the short. Uh, term. In the short term, to have them in Pakistan, right? right. Uh, people ask, well, you have. Uh, got it manufactured from you know uh, TSMC. So, so uh, in, in terms of the factories who make it, well, uh, there are top five like right. TSMC, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company is one of them. Right. Samsung, Intel, Global Foundries. Right. So, 95% of the chipset is produced by these top five companies. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, now, having said this, uh, people may ask that uh, you have got it manufactured or or fabricated from a from from a foreign foundry, well, it doesn't qualify as indigenous. Well, I think the real indigenous part is the design part. Yeah. Okay. Right? I'm sorry, you know, I shared my question <laughs> prior to the show mm -hmm. as well. I think I should have done it during the show, but please continue. <laughs> so, so, so that's where. So, so design is the thing that that is. You know, Matters. you have this mm -hmm. blue sky idea okay. that you just conceive, okay. and then the designers. So, designing is an art. All right. Right. Mm -hmm. You really need very skillful, trained human resource in order to come up, uh, you know, uh, to, to, to design this chip, to, to put together various parts of this, this uh, chip together such that they perform optimally. True. Right? You do not want to produce a chip that will actually drain the battery at the, at the end of the day. Exactly. So it's an art. It's an art. And this part, designing itself, is indigenous. True. Right? So it's almost like, like you, you have the blueprint of Tesla and you, you, you get it uh, uh, manufactured from, 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 from a from a third party factory, right? So which part is the most? Uh, I think the designing, designing part, part, right? So if, if I may butt in here, sure. uh, even large uh, countries, large companies, ARM processor, must, everybody's heard of it, it's in everything. Yep. It's right. a fabulous design. UK does not make its own processor. It sends it to Taiwan, Singapore, et cetera. Right. So this is a very globally recognized model where you design your chip, have it manufactured, but then you have to have a capability True. that you can check that the chip is the same that you design. Exactly. Nobody has put back doors in it. And that's where the human resource development part Probably. comes in, where uh, right. Dr. Hyan was talking about, that we have developed that capability and actually spent months verifying this design and uh -huh. then verifying the chip now. It's going to continue uh, for a while now. But uh, I would like to point out, mm -hmm. uh, you were talking about support from the government and this is a money intensive thing. Right. Yes. Uh, we have done the first part. We will inshallah start prototyping products. Okay. But what na na happens to, uh, what needs to happen next is that industry has to step in. Okay. And Take refrigerator manufacturers, TV yeah. manufacturers, car manufacturers, they have to then invest into this and therefore take your own chips rather than buying chips from abroad. Exactly. Initially, it may actually cost more to do your own chips. Okay. Initially. Okay. Uh, but you will have full control over it. Secondly, as the numbers grow, this becomes cheaper. Hmm. So that's where government support usually comes in, that they subsidize or cre uh, create funds to incentivize the industry to use your own chips. Also, the we are a Ministry of Science and Technology University, yes. and mm -hmm. the ministry is already helping us set up the chip design center. Okay. So this thing is going to grow into a full-scale chip design center. Wow. Right. It's going to be a national collaboration, inshallah. We will integrate all universities who are doing similar work, because this is a national product. Mm -hmm. And we right. are going to, inshallah, very soon announce a competition for students and faculty 
which they're going to use this chip to design projects. Exactly. So that we have ideas coming from them. We will give them awards, of course, uh, and that will create the hype necessary to take your own product forward. And that, that for sure is wonderful for the future prospects of Pakistan as well. And imagine, ladies and gentlemen, we do have property tycoons over here. We do have right. industrial uh, industrializations tycoon over here as right. well. So, I mean, for one of the tycoon to understand that this will be a gold mine you will be sitting on, you know, for the rest of your life and the future generations to come, I think we certainly can kind of gather such an investment and have our own facility which will obviously right. lead or pave another way towards prosperity for Pakistan if we start to export it and that's something which we require. But sir, very quickly, you know, for the layman out there who might not know what a microprocessor is, what the chip is going to do, you know, so how would you make them understand that what we have made? You know, so for them, please. Okay, if you look around your house, you're going to see thousands of things running on electronics. Yes. Uh, some things you may not even think are running on electronics are actually running like a toaster oven. Yep. Right? Even that has a circuit board inside. All of them has a, have a microprocessor. Yes. Right? So microprocessor is the brain of anything which runs on electricity these days. Even the simple bulbs are now becoming LED bulbs. Yes, yes, LED yes. bulbs have a microprocessor. So you need a microprocessor to decide what to do with that device. So this is the brain. You teach this brain to run a TV, it will run a TV. You teach this brain to run a microwave, it will run a microwave. If you teach this brain to run an electric vehicle, it will run an electric vehicle. True. So we have designed the brain. We have full control over the teaching mechanism, the coding mechanism, yes. the programming mechanism, which means now we can make products out of it. And we've already started prototyping so then some we products. We will definitely have the support staff at the end, at the back end as well, where you know, if we yeah. want the chips, obviously they will kind of look after what we require, of course. You know, the chip to do so as well, and that will be provided by NAST once again. Is that true? Absolutely, absolutely. Wow. And again, government support. Yes. Uh, what we need from uh, the government and, and what we need for people in uh, different positions of power to understand is indigenization is a longer process mm -hmm. and it requires a lot of investment in the early days and then right. it becomes commercial yes so right. uh, being a public sector university we are of course dependent on government funding so this is an area where governments can fund this will generate startups new companies coming up with products based on our own product those will create the national economy uh, knowledge economy contributions that of course we want Exactly. And it pays back multiple times, but and, you have to start. And sir, when you figured it out, you know, that, okay, indigenously we can do so as well. And, you know, we ha do have a live example over mm -hmm. here in the studios with us. Mm -hmm. What did the ministry say to you then? You know, you might have shared the good news with the ministry in the first place. And what, what were their expectations and what do they hope to do in near future? And also, I really wanted to ask about the raw materials because I do feel that silicon is not present in every country, right? It's a... Uh, sort of a sacred, uh, uh, what do you call it, the element, you know, because, because a lot of people, a lot of countries are going after it and they want to secure their supply of it. Um, so what about that? Do we have some vulnerability in that sense, in that area? Um, the, the material is available abundantly. The problem is processing the material. Yes. Okay. So which is what these foundries are capable of. Okay. So silicon is sand. So you have sand everywhere. Okay. Nobody can use it, that to make chips True. because okay. that's a very, very uh, specialized process. Okay. So uh, we don't have that capability at this level yet. We can make bigger things uh, in silicon, but not uh, microprocessors. And we will, inshallah, get there inshallah. because we have to start. Uh, talking about the ministry that you were saying, the support actually is needed to start growing it so that one day we reach that stage. True. And uh, when we started this program, it was our own initiative. NUST decided to start it. But uh, a year ago, we took up this case of setting up the Chip Design Center, and it's still with the ministry for a decision to fund it. Okay. But we have already decided where we're going to make it. These are the people who are going to work it. And inshallah, we will get their support and funding to make it of course, grow at the speed that we want it to grow. Inshallah, sir. Inshallah, we certainly want to wish you best of luck. But towards the end, obviously, you know, uh, during the COVID period, we have been listening that, uh, you know, there has been a lot of stigma uh, around that, you know, nobody's going to get themselves vaccine or right, get them right. inoculated because it might be a microchip, you know, entering <laughs> into a bloodstream. <laughs> you know, so I just like... want to very quickly move on to Dr. Rehan Sabu over here. <laughs> so do you think, because, you know, it's just a small... Tiny black hole, God forbid, if somebody's in an accident and you scan a chip and it tells you, hey, you know what, he's this much old, you know, that's his history. I think it can do a lot of wonders. It can save a lot of lives. Do you think in near future, we might have such chips being planted into humans? Or uh, is it already there? Well, they are, they are already there. Okay. But uh, in terms of the Pakistani doing it, uh, like Dr. Izvan mentioned, uh, we did the first humble step. Is the is it's one of the smallest part of the biggest puzzle. Yes. Uh, and this is one humble contribution from NAS side. 
uh, and it needs a lot of support uh, by uh, people watching us uh, in, in some yeah. interest, like Silicon Valley, yeah. uh, for foreign diaspora, uh, uh, the government, uh, the companies. Uh, by the way, uh, there are many companies who are actually have started entering to Pakistan and uh, opening up their uh, actually uh, uh, business centers uh, yes. right over uh, in, 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 in Pakistan. Uh, so uh, I think uh, with all of uh, if if all these stakeholders like you know uh, people sitting outside Silicon Valley guys, uh, government of Pakistan, uh, academics. So these are all the stakeholders. So, so if we join hands together, we can do wonders. Actually, I also want to actually uh, give uh, a message to my students. Sure, if, go if, ahead. If, 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 if you allow me. So uh, my dear my dear students. Uh, <laughs> who are sitting and watching nationally or internationally. Uh, we started this project uh, with, with, without waiting for uh, any support coming from, from anywhere. Yeah. Uh, we, we started, we knew where we wanted to go, like Dr. Izwan mentioned. Uh, semiconductor is the future. Semiconductor is the future and has become a very active area uh, since uh, wh whatever has happened at, at the global landscape. So we started out very minimalist very minimalist, without having a lot of resources. Yep. Our, the, our main resource that we bank on was our uh, human resource capital, our students like you. Uh, so the students actually, they have to come forward. They have to come forward. They have to uh, actually learn these skills uh, together with us uh, and join forces with us in order to you know come together and start delivering product like this. Wow. So uh, this, uh, at the heart of the, so we are fabless, right? Yeah. Meaning that we can only design it and rely on a uh, third party manufacturer so to make our chips. Yes. Like, like, so, uh, so design is one part and then we can also uh, focus on, you know, packaging yep. and testing as well. So uh, short of fabrication, we can actually tap in design, packaging and testing and final product. So these are the areas where we can focus together. Uh, and we certainly want to wish you best of luck, sir. And we certainly want you to, right. you know, kind of uh, get all your wishes fulfilled as well. And certainly that's right. what we as Pakistanis pray for and hope for as well. But as soon as you're going to go back to university, the students would be like, sir, you have to lecture there. Well, thank you very much, sir, for being with us. Thank you very much, gentlemen, pleasure. for joining us. For right. Wonderful to be in conversation with such amazing brainy people early in the morning. who have done so much for the country and we certainly want to pray for you for your well-being right. and for your entire team who's actually achieved such a milestone for pakistan in the first place and that too right. indigenously I and think that's one, one last important. step if you can just <laughs> add <laughs> wait, <laughs> one last thing so i think <laughs> where, where all this is going uh, this is going uh, to showcase to the world that alhamdulillah we have this uh, ability to design here actually and we really want uh, big houses like Intel, like Apple, to start their shops here, okay, like right. they have done already in, in our neighboring country. Uh, so this is the first step. And many of the research groups, they are also, they are also working. Uh, so our main idea is that uh, we want foreign uh, right. big vendors, big shops, to okay. open up their shops here. And then last but not the least one is the Kaid's vision of self-reliance. Right. Thank you, sir. Yeah. We have exactly. to be self-sufficient. So you. that's where we are. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you very much once again. And, you know, I like how, you know, my guests are so comfortable in my studios <laughs> as well. But once again, thank you very much. But for everybody who's out there, ladies and gentlemen, it's about time that we head out towards a short break. We have another segment and another amazing personality waiting to say her heart out. What is that all about? We will be sharing right after a short break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Good morning. Thank you, sir.
Welcome back. And earlier on, we were talking about you know how the uh, the semiconductor chips are automational processes and how NUS is making us proud. You know, in securing ourselves. And, and you she's know, so happy because she happens to right. be an alumni of NUS. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, and also, you know, Shazad. So our next segment, we are going to talk about you know something uh, which uh, I feel in Pakistan has a lot of gap in that sense. You know, so we're going to talk about again a thing uh, called the podcast. You know, um, and I think Pakistan does not have a, a very good podcast in that sense right i am not going to agree to this which, which, which podcast, like for example i think muru is doing great i know you know when we talk about podcast like podcast as well i think uh, gaji swag is doing a good job you know he just recently did interview uh, a lot of uh, important people and they did give out a lot of good messages and they had a good listeners as well i don't agree with shavir i think they they wasting a lot of time very sorry mm -hmm. to say that but you know that podcast is not worth our time if you want to learn something, I think Ganji Swag and Muru, they definitely are doing a great job. Right. Yeah. And, and uh, are they into, you know, producing some very intellectual content? Yes, in Muru is. Sense? Muru is. You know, you really need to listen to Muru's okay. podcast because he kind of from very scratch to whatever he produces, he's doing it all by himself. Really? Yes. So, okay, so I need to listen to Thank that because you. I haven't listened to that. Uh, so without any further ado, I would like to introduce my guest. Uh, she happens to be Miss Turfa Nadeem. She is an entrepreneur. And she also has uh, just started her own podcast by the name of Two Frustrated <laughs> Millionaires. <laughs> uh, Assalamu alaikum, Turfa, and welcome to our show. Thank you so much for having right, me. Right, so just uh, tell us more about your you know, podcast. How did you come up with this idea and what are the topics that you are discussing? Yes, yeah, so as uh, the guy you mentioned, basically we saw Shazad. <laughs> Sorry. <It's all> right. <laughs> we really um, realized that there was a bit of a gap, and I completely agree with you. Some people are doing a really good job, a brilliant job uh, with their podcast, mm -hmm. but there happens to be a gap when it comes to women. And I'm sorry, it's not just about everything should be revolving around women, but uh, I think uh, our narrative and how we see things, that needs to be out too. Yeah. So for that reason, and for to have an independent perspective into things, we thought of uh, starting a podcast series. And it's yep. not just a simple, casual, fun, entertainment sort of a podcast series. It was basically, um, uh, we designed it to be a socio-political commentary. Wow. And uh, we wanted to talk about economy. We wanted to talk about all the scientific things and we wanted to really focus on that well it, it's wonderful and you know just to add on to that as well you know let's for another 10 or 15 minutes as much time we've got you know yeah. let's think that you know we are actually on a podcast all right let's do it this <laughs> way as well you know because on pod, podcast ladies and gentlemen people usually speak their heart out as yeah. well and you know this is something which is required mm. now you very wonderfully explained that this is something you wanted to do we have been doing it for the last 10 years and you know we know that the, that the challenges we have faced you know we yes. May it be about breast cancers, may it be about anything related yeah. to women, you know, harassment, mm -hmm. Muslim missile, mm -hmm. may it be about chips and semiconductors. We've yeah. talked about everything. We've talked about the social political right. conditions within Pakistan and outside Pakistan as well. So that does not get you a lot of commercial value. You know, this is something which is yeah. of utmost importance when we talk about podcasts in particular, where we do not have a larger audience for that as well. How do you think that to kind of get the audience to be out there, mm -hmm. to listen to you people, because you're absolutely talking a lot of sense, how would you plan or how do you plan to do so? So th there are, I think, a lot of dimensions go into it. Uh, there are a couple of factors. I think to grab the audience, my idea wasn't to really go out fishing for viewership. Right. I wasn't, I wasn't planning to do that. Yeah. We wanted to have something where we can independently talk our hearts out. Right. And also mention things that how, from a perspective of a millennial, uh, things in Pakistan are happening, what can we do, and to really discuss the possibilities and prospects for them. That's the kind of thing, and I believe that although we have prepared our socials for that, uh, we have prepared a lot of, uh, you know, these, uh, this kind of presence is also maybe Important. a part of this, but uh, I do not simply go fishing for viewership. This is not what I'm aiming for, right. but I do believe if you produce good content and if it's worth watching, people yeah. will watch. Which is why we ranked at number three, Alhamdulillah, amongst top ten shows in Pakistan. <laughs> Great, good right. to know that. Right, so I really wanted to ask, and I really feel passionate about this uh, subject, Shahzad, that uh, in 21st century people are focusing a lot on their rights right the freedom of expression 
freedom to movement, mm -hmm. freedom to this and that and etc. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So they basically they're talking about their rights. Mm -hmm. No one is talking about their responsibilities. And I do feel that, you know, with the advent of the social media, yeah. uh, it is even more important to talk about responsibility because, you know, anyone can write anything on social media without thinking, you know, what are the consequences? True. I do feel that there is a concerted effort at the de-responsibilitization. Um, so what do you think, you know, c considering the fact that you are doing a podcast mm -hmm. um, and especially when it comes to the responsibility, uh, what is the feminist angle in that and, and how does it... If there is any. Yeah. There is any. Well, there are many. <laughs> okay, so uh, I think it, responsibility is on a very personal level. Right. Anything can be misused. Any opportunity you get, you can really take advantage of that True. if you have to go that way. Yeah. So this comes down to common courtesy. In a civilized world, you have to understand that just because you're given rights and you're offered something, doesn't mean you misuse the, those opportunities. Right. Right. And for, for the betterment of people, I think this goes at a personal level. I need to understand that my responsibility is that if I am supposed to come here and talk about something, I say something positive and kind. Yeah. So we right. have to be kind. And this was something that's the base of what we're starting, mm -hmm. that we need to be respectful. We do not want to be shouting and yelling in shows. We do not want to give out that kind of uncivilized you know, behavior. You. We wouldn't want that. <laughs> so it has to be very respectful. And honestly, I would like to mention PTV in this, right. because back in the days, you know, the starring of millennials, and we used to, re we still remember PTV how nice it was, how right. calm it was, the newscasters, everything. I miss those days. And this was one of the reasons why we thought that we should bring something up, although I hate being in the you know, spotlight, <laughs> but I think now we have to take it to ourselves and yeah. really introduce something that is different. I don't want to make fun of somebody. I don't want to roast somebody over a podcast. So some of the people that we speak about, they often, you know, in a fun way, do that. Mm. But I would necessarily not want to try to, you know, uh, adapt that kind of a And lifestyle. that's great. And, you know, it's after a decade, ladies and gentlemen, right. that I actually have somebody over here in the studios with me who actually thinks exactly the same I was thinking 10 years ago as well. You know, Sinem, because, you know, when we initiated right. with this program, I think right. that's what the concept was, that we do not want to do Jadu Tone and Chandiya <laughs> and, you yeah. know, all of that bashing and whatnot. Yeah. And Alhamdulillah, right. Shukar Alhamdulillah, right. you know, we were able to do so as well, which is wonderful. But now, you know, when you, when you talk about so, so much of positivity, when you talk about so much of the good which is around us, and that yet we are unable to see it, and your podcast will actually help people identify. Yeah. Why do you think that the title of your podcast would be the oh, two yes. frustrated Oh, yes. Oh, that's a story I have to yeah. tell you. Please go ahead. We have, uh, we as millennials, we have seen global recessions. We have seen a global pandemic. Mm -hmm. Everything was closed. We have seen shit going crazy. Sorry if I'm it's using right. that word. Yeah, 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 yeah. So everything uh, that we've seen lately, it's kind of, you know, a little disturbing, but yeah. also that we have gotten used to it. Yeah. So after all this frustration, life has brought us to this platform mm -hmm. and we want to talk about things. <laughs> and our history is all that, you know, yeah. our history is global recessions, financial issues. We have seen climate change. Mm -hmm. We have seen 45 degrees in Islamabad. It, it, it wasn't like this before. 46 ever. even, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't even want to. Talk but you know, in it. addition to that, like, yeah. you know, when we talk about millennials, obviously, you know, they're not as old. And imagine yeah. they've gone through and they've seen so much. So much. So. You know, obviously, you know, so you certainly have the right to be frustrated in the exactly. first place. But so, then how do you say that, you know, the, those two frustrated millennials are not going to talk about anything negative going on in their lives? Oh, yes, that's catchy. You know, you're frustrated, but you have patience in you and you have learned the art of patience <laughs> by going through so much yeah. that despite of all that frustration, Frustration, you sit, you talk, you're respectful, and you can do that. So that's yeah. basically a message we're trying to give out. That even though you're frustrated, you're overworked, you have everything going on, and thing, life can be a little uh, disturbing sometimes. Yeah, you know? and it's going to empower so many other people yeah. as well. You know, may it be women, may it be men as well, that, you know, who wanted to speak their heart out, and I think it will be a great opportunity. How, right. how do you think they can get to your podcast, you know, people who are listening to you, yeah. you know, any portal addresses, something, you know, please go ahead, share yes, it with us. Yes, uh, they can really contact us on our e email address uh, you can find us on social media soon right now we're in the process of publishing everything but once it's all ready you can directly get in touch with us and we'll mm. have you
you over for, as a guest. Ha have, have you already gotten the mics and the camera and everything? Oh, the production is already ready, yes. Wow. We have shot uh, one uh, episode, yeah. but right now we're not publishing it. We're going according to the marketing strategy. Yeah. So it's that and public relations, of course. So that's why I'm here. And, and, and you know, talking about podcasts, so obviously there was a time when nobody used to kind of right. uh, video capture it as well, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. But now after Steve-O, I've seen a yeah. lot of people have so, been you doing know, so. So, you know, there is uh, a general sort of uh, layout to podcast yeah. these days. And we wanted it to be a very casual conversation, but also something that is shot professionally. Done or be professionally. mindful of the cameras around you. Yes, Anna? be mindful, yes. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I really wanted to, you know, talk about this subject. And Shahzad, I do feel that um, at this point, at the time where a planet is, I do feel that, you know, this capitalist ideology is responsible for it, you know, because of the over-exploitation of the resources and because of the uh, excessive, you know, mining and excessive uh, greed, you know, that has brought to us this point. Um, so I really want you to talk about the multinational corporations and, you know, how um, the feminist mm. ideology fits into that. Uh, Shazan might not like it, but I really wanted to talk about ahead. this. Uh, how can I you be so judgmental about <laughs> no, me? No, no, no. I'm yeah. not judging you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is, you know, you enjoy certain topics. Certain topics are like, okay, I'm going to do it. I enjoy every topic. <laughs> I enjoy talking. So, for, I think uh, one of the things that I really wanted to highlight was right. that as women, now we're starting something. It, it already is making a point. Uh, what I wanted to talk about is uh, labor force participation of women. And when we talk about labor force, we talk about corporates, people yeah. already working. Working women uh, do already face some sort of uh, difference when it comes to different, uh, you know, business backgrounds. We yeah. do have challenges in media. We do have challenges in, uh, for, for example, big cops. Mm -hmm. And there can be some patriarchal narratives to them as well. Right. What we can do is uh, really have the sense of responsibility as women, but also people all around us and society um, overall can encourage women to come to these platforms to work and the more women are working the better our economy will get and then we will continue to do so thank you very much Rufa. <laughs> so that much. towards the end you you were actually in line with what wanted to share as well but right. thank you very much once thank again we want to wish you best of luck as well thank you and soon ladies and gentlemen you'll be able to catch up on their podcast as well they're going right. according to the marketing strategy they already have one episode recorded <laughs> i don't know what's in it but yes congratulations are in order for you too as well and for everybody who's out there for me a feminist is someone who actually kind of believes in equal rights for each and every individual over here that's on this true. planet that's, that's it that's true that's true and that's a very nice message you know even though they may not be you know uh, living things for example there is the movement for the nature's right for example rivers have right for, for example trees have rights and i think they certification have, day exactly yes. exactly this is what i was going to say and at this point in this time i think it's very important that we all look out for each other because we have only planet earth uh, to survive here, to live here. If we are not going to take care of it, I don't think so we can survive. Are we just uh, looking out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. For everybody, please make sure that you write to us on our Facebook page, which is with the name of? Well, this morning. On Twitter. Well, this morning. On Daily Motion and YouTube. Well, this morning. And the fabulous repeat is going to be at? Five. Uh, past five, ten. Five past ten, sorry. <laughs> Till like. the next time, look after yourselves. One, two, three. Good morning, morning. Jumma Mubarak. Thank you.